would like to start my talk by asking every single one of you a question. Do you feel well today? It is that same question that I envision myself asking every single one of my patients as they walk into my clinic when I'm older. For as long as I can remember, I've dreamed of pursuing a career in the field of medicine. Ever since I was first introduced to science in the first grade, I've had my heart set on spending the rest of my life learning and exploring this field. I officially made this decision in the seventh grade after a parent-teacher conference during which my biology teacher looked me in the eye and said, Farheen, if you do not decide to pursue a career in the field of medicine, I'm telling you right now, you will regret it for the rest of your life. When 12-year-old me started telling people that I dream of owning a clinic and vaccinating people one day, I found that I was getting the same two reactions over and over and over again. After asking the generic, wow, um, are you sure you're ready to commit to that? Half my friends and family quickly followed up with a, why science? Wouldn't you rather pursue a secure career in the field of business? Now, while there's nothing wrong with pursuing a career in the field of business or any other field for that matter, the thing about science that keeps me wanting to learn more is the simplicity that lies beneath its complexity. See, when you think about it, human beings like you and me were extremely complex creatures. We have muscles, we have thoughts, we have feelings, and we study all of this in science. But all we're really made up of are tiny little cells. And what's even simpler about these tiny little structures is that all they're doing is responding to what's going on around them. The impact that they have on us and our human evolution is not the intention of their action, but merely an unintended consequence. This is what I want to spend the rest of my life studying. Now, these consequences aren't always positive, but they are relatively unavoidable. I mean, they are the sole reason as to why science is a field which continues to grow and continues to change, keeping things interesting. I know I've seen it in the 11 years that I've been conducting simple experiments, whether they be at home or at my school science lab. I often find that I conduct experiments expecting to find one thing and solve one problem, but end up at different things and causing other problems while I'm at it. But at the same time, these unintended consequences which fascinate me have made me second guess my ambition. Because if they are unavoidable, how can I even think about entering a field knowing that there is a chance that I can unintentionally harm someone when my main goal is to help them. So by this point, I had this massive internal conflict that I was battling inside me, and telling the other half of my friends and family really didn't help with this situation. Instead of backing me up, the other half of my friends and family instilled an immense amount of doubt in me. Not doubt in my capabilities, but doubt in my role in the future of medicine. They simply told me that technology is the future of medicine, so why would I bother studying to become a doctor? The more I thought about these two reactions, the more I started to put the pieces together. It got me thinking. If people are continuing to develop technology, this must mean that as technology improves, these unintended consequences decrease, right? But that's not the case. In fact, the development of technology actually leads to more unintended consequences. Now, I know it's a hard concept to wrap your mind around. In our everyday lives, we often look towards both technology and medicine for answers, for solutions. We don't usually expect them to cause more problems. There's no denying that technological interventions like MRIs and X-rays have played a substantial role in the evolution of medicine over the past few centuries. 
And as time has gone on, these interventions have continued to develop, becoming a lot more clear, a lot more precise, a lot more accurate. They're now so advanced that they're able to identify abnormalities in your body which are absolutely tiny. And while yes, this may sound like a dream to a lot of you, it really is the complete opposite. According to an article released by health researchers Fisher and Welch, as the role that technology plays in the medical field increases, so do pseudo diseases. I'm sure everybody sitting in the audience today is familiar with the adjective pseudo. It is a prefix that is used to mark something as a sham, to refer to something that is not genuine. And that is exactly what pseudo diseases are. These are, disease that, these are diseases that would have never become apparent if it weren't for these technologies, for they are the ones that cause no symptoms of death. Now, let's put this into perspective. What if, let's say, sometime in the near future, you walk into my clinic and I tell you that the technological interventions that I have are detecting abnormalities in your body that are so small, the chance that they will ever have an effect on you is almost negative, what will you do? You'll still request medication. And as a doctor, this adds a new layer of stress and uncertainty on me. Because if I run a CT scan and I find that you have a tumor in your body, which is so small, the chance of it ever affecting you, let alone put you at risk of death, is tiny, will I be able to let you go knowing that you have a tumor in your body when in reality you're actually perfectly fine? The development of technology has now instilled completely unnecessary anxiety on both sides of the spectrum, which makes me wonder, if the tumor may never affect you, wouldn't it have been better if the tumor wasn't detected in the first place? Because think about it. If the tumor may never affect you, eventually the unnecessary medication that's prescribed and the unnecessary tests that follow and the unnecessary procedures could. It is now the unintended consequences of these technological interventions which are killing people instead of saving them. Now, if I have just instilled an immense amount of anxiety in all of you, know that that is completely intentional. And I'm telling you all of this because we're living in a time where technology seems to be the answer to everything. And that's because they make things simple. They make our lives practical. And while yes, this is true in a lot of cases, it really isn't in the field of medicine. At this point in time, robots are conducting kidney transplants. Sensors in the form of stickers which you can stick onto your teeth to track what you are eating are being released. And apps on your gadgets are starting to track your heart rates and risk for potential heart disease. Early this year, Apple released a new feature on their Apple Watch, an app which functions as an ECG monitor. For those of you who don't know what an ECG monitor is, it's basically this big machine that is used to detect abnormal heart rates and therefore catch various forms of heart disease. But the faultiness in these machines in correctly diagnosing various diseases was already clear in the electronic fetal monitoring machine. Found in a majority of delivery rooms worldwide, the EFM was a machine that was introduced with good intentions, but only led to various unintended consequences. You see, babies born with cerebral palsy were seen to be born with extremely slow heart rates. So doctors hypothesized that if they could detect these slow heart rates in unborn babies using the EFM, they could then prescribe the mother with the correct medication to prevent their child from being born with CP. Just like the app on your Apple Watch, 
can prevent you from getting a heart attack. But a recent study conducted by the Royal College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists in the UK shows that only 0.2% of children born with cerebral palsy showed abnormal heart rates on this machine. And according to a paper released by a pediatric professor at the John Hopkins Medical Institute in 2007, the amount of trust that parents had in this one piece of technology led to more and more mothers scheduling cesarean sections, which led to more and more mothers dying. At this point in time, my dream of becoming a doctor remains strong. Of course, I don't know what the future holds for me, but I do know that by pursuing my dream of becoming a doctor in the future, I will make a significant impact in the lives of others. Because to all of you who said that you feel well today, at the rate at which technology is developing, I honestly don't know if you will feel well tomorrow. Thank you.